Jojo Siwa is a creator who made a rise to fame when she was a lot younger on the TV show Dance Mums. This show basically highlighted an interesting approach to coaching and parenting. But after an upbringing of just being shouted at by adults, it's safe to say that recently she's made a bit of a change to that character. She's now very far detached from the bright colours, cheesy smiles and just general innocence of youth. Because now she's necking on with some random on an island. Like when a tree falls in the forest, no one hears it. As far as contrasts go, that is quite the whopper. Look, she used to have green splodgy stuff. Now she's doing this. She's also decided to get herself some fresh ink. If you could have one heaven phone call, this is a random heaven phone call, okay? Nothing. If I'm being completely honest here, I think people are overreacting about the tattoo thing. I may be slightly biased because I'm doing some sort of patchwork thing myself. However, the little arm twist there. That's very obvious that it's just there for us to see them. It's kind of done for the shock factor, which is a bit of a running theme and I will get more into that a bit later. Just because you have some sort of tattoo here, temporary or not. You don't just have to shove it in everyone's faces. But the fit. Mr. T wants you to come outside. What's gone on here? Seriously. And why are you getting so close to the camera? I feel like I'm about to be throttled when watching this. Joe Exotic is coming for me. But speaking of lookalikes, the comments didn't really go the way she probably would have planned them to. Most people are comparing her to many different public figures, and she decided to react to one. The fact that this has 100,000 likes, but also that someone thinks it's an insult, Oh me, that would mean that I'm Miley Cyrus's dad. I'll take it. <laughs> she is literally the most millennial Gen Z person on this planet. If we look past her saying homie sounding like Marge Simpson. <laughs> why are you proud to be compared to this man? But one thing that the comments are starting to highlight here is that she's beginning to sound like Abby from the show Dance Moms. Ding that. And if you don't know who Abby is, well, well, well. I'm about to give you quite the rundown. Basically, she was like the walking definition of tough love taken too far. She got in lots of confrontation with kids and the parents, so much so that she has a 13 minute, 48 second compilation of meanest moments. That's a lot of mean moments. Do not treat my child like that! You begged me to get your kid back! Do not! I want this kid with me! I don't want her with you! Sleeping with some guy you're not even married to! No! Jesus, that is quite the mean moment. But just to add to the public image that we can see of Abby, here's a jail sentence. You could call it karma. See what I did there? It's the name of the Jojo Siwa song. But speaking of Abby, her and Jojo haven't always seen eye to eye. She deserves nothing! Don't have an attitude that you are entitled in this world. You are not! You deserve nothing else. You earn it. You can't stand here and cry. I have no, 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 no crying children. Not. Well, cry. Based off this interaction here, or lack of interaction, because there's only really one person having their input, I'm sure that if I was to hypothetically play a clip of Abby reacting to Jojo Siwa's new song for the first time, well, I'm sure it's going to be a completely balanced and fair review. Oh, she's like a Loch Ness monster coming out of the ocean. Maybe not. And for some reason, James Charles is trying to get involved. Unlike him to wait until someone's an adult to enter the scene. Okay, so the girl in the red is the one causing the trouble. Yeah. To be fair, that face she pulled is perfectly valid in my opinion. Who thought it would be a good idea for Jojo and this person to start humping each other? It's just really weird, isn't it? No one really needs to see that. Have you learned nothing? But to be fair to Abby, not that I really want to. In this video, she was actually fairly nice. Maybe after all of the legal stuff and fines, maybe she can't really risk saying negative things towards Jojo anymore. Because we all know what Americans are like. It's freedom of speech until it upsets you. That's a joke, America. I love you and cheeseburger. But now I want to get into her big old rebrand that she's doing. Now, if you don't count the video early where she kind of just walks around in her Joe Exotic fit and starts talking about phoning dead people, she just randomly dropped this TikTok out of the blue. Warning, the following content is not made for children and may be disturbing or offensive to some viewers, may contain sexual themes, violence, strong language, dramatic scenarios, and flashing lights. Viewer discretion is advised. Bit cringe, innit? This stuff is just really weird to me, though. Everyone who knows of Jojo Siwa knows her because she was a kid on a dance show. So someone around her or herself has gone, you know what would be a great content decision for us to take? Let's tell people there's gonna be loads of spicy scenes and bad words and stuff. I just feel like if that wasn't her idea, then that's just a really creepy thing to do. Because most people that are influencers or have made a career out of content, they're not the only ones involved. There will always be loads of people behind the scenes who kind of have their input and try to dictate things. It's all still weird regardless, by the way. Because I think we all know that it's done because it's a massive contrast to her previous public image. Which just makes it weird. But then she follows up with a video in her 2008 Vauxhall Corsa. Warning, 
The following content is not made for children and may be disturbing or offensive to some viewers. But hey guys, look at me with my Starbucks being so in the know. I'd be a bit worried if you weren't in the know, as it is your video. Jojo, your wheels are not pointing straight, I just thought I'd let you know that. And I'm sure by now we've all seen the music video. Was it worth all this hype building? I'm not really sure. Don't get me wrong, it was definitely all a shock to everyone. That sort of content direction did its job, and I guess it got lots of YouTubers and other content creators talking about it. But like, did we need this video here? But once again, she responds to be people talking about her personally. I'm sorry, the old Jojo can't come to the phone right now. What? That bitch is in dreamland. It's just cringe, innit? She literally does not look present in this moment. I guess the boomerang never came back. But I have seen lots of people do the whole she's grown up, people change as they get older. Not everyone has to change like this though, do they? Not everyone has to become some sort of cringe attention-seeking main character. And when people are doing things to be controversial, it's obviously going to get negative comments. That's the point. So all the weirdos just going crazy to defend her. Just know that all the negative comments and all the engagements was just building hype and building momentum on her socials for her to drop this music video. Because all the content is trying to be like, oh, look how crazy this new direction I'm going is. When in most cases, people doing this, you're kind of setting yourself up for failure. Unless the final product is extremely good. Because you're setting the bar astronomically high. When you do that, there's always going to be gargantuan expectations. If you take Eminem, for example, when he released the album Revival, he did lots of promo for it, and it flopped heavily. But then when he released the Kamikaze album afterwards, he just kind of dropped dropped it out of the blue, and the response was overwhelmingly positive. Maybe that's a little bit random, but I guess I just mean in general, when people do things like this on social media, they give you that sort of like shock factor marketing, trying to be as outrageous and extravagant as humanly possible. Most people set themselves up for failure, but then after weeks of just like filler content and engagement baiting, she decides to give us a try on for the new outfit. Oh, exciting. <laughs> You look like Megamind. No childhood. I mean, not that I can talk. I look like I've gone painting. But at this point, she's posted the outfit, effectively the whole song. Surely at that point, you're running out of element of surprise. With every single one of these posts, the bar for shock factor just gets higher and higher. But if people see all of these things before release, it kind of just ruins that element of outrage and shock factor. Because they already know the naughty words that you're planning on using. <laughs> We've obviously been shown the outfit. You've told us there's going to be spicy elements. So I guess the only thing we're going to be looking out for is flashing lights now. And based off the comments on this TikTok that I'm about to show you, people have taken control of that. No one's taking it very seriously. Yes, she's getting all the exposure that she wants. Well done, round of applause for you. But no one likes it on these platforms. Someone literally said their nan came out of the grave to turn it off. But I am gonna lie, this is fire. But another thing I wanna talk about is a podcast appearance that she recently made. The podcast is called Call Her Daddy? No? I think people would probably think you're like stunted in your growth because yep. you're a child actor. Yep. You act like a kid. Yep they don't see you behind the scenes like you're right of you being exactly. like and then i wrote an entire show and then i would edit it and then i would upload and then i would do it again and i was a business person and i'm yep. sitting in meetings and i'm meeting with yep. adults so it's like we're seeing the fun outgoing jojo of uh -huh. like click on my video and welcome to my youtube channel right seriously please don't forget to breathe but 10 likes and i'll intro my next video like that also can we please just address the elephant in the room what the fuck is that on her head it's like all the litter that gets stuck to a mollusk at the bottom of the ocean but what she was saying about behind the scenes i guess is kind of true but that does not disassociate reality with what she's doing she knows full well that her persona to the public eye is that of a child that's the whole point in this music video it causes shock and she wants to rebrand from that. And there's people in the comments saying things like she's a marketing genius. No, she's not. The word genius gets branded about so much with content creators now. To be called a genius now in content, all you need to do is lose all self-respect and know how to piss people off. It's not a talent. I genuinely despise this view of social media. It's not a skill. Anybody who makes content solely to be a dick or just cause inconvenience to people in public or they just do controversial shit for the sake of it, I just imagine your house stinks. Not that it's fake, it's just, it's not natural to have a camera in front of your face. So naturally of I'm course, playing a character of myself. A bit, yeah. Right. Well, if it's not natural, it's trying to be somebody that you're not. That is fake. Is that even an argument? But to be completely fair, a lot of people on social media these days do just kind of portray an exaggerated version of themselves. That's kind of why I only really watch commentary videos now. Or like some gaming videos here and there, which aren't just people shouting and over editing. But I suppose that is kind of the reality of content now. Loud equals fun. 
money and make your videos as fast paced and as obnoxious as you possibly can. You manage that and you're on to a winner. But back to the podcast. This is helpful to hear from you. Yeah, it's it's funny. I've actually really enjoyed talking to you about this because no one's gone deep into this yeah. like with me ever. So it's 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 been fun for me to hear you ask a question almost with like one point in your head right. and then I explain the answer and then you're like, huh. oh! Isn't that just a conversation? You ask somebody a question and they give you an answer. You become informed. Am I missing something here? I feel like I must be. But yeah, the music video's out. I was a bad girl. You were a bad girl. This you? But I saw a comment say I was a bagel, now I can't unhear that. Anyway, that's about as much as Jojo Sigma I can possibly watch. But I've been John5161, thank you very much for watching, ladies and genitals. I hope you did enjoy and watch these cool videos here. And subscribe and like the video. Cheers. Bye.